Hey everybody, this is Anthony for VR Game Rankings. We are now on episode 34 of our daily vlog series. It of course is Thursday, November 16th. And I do have a handful of news stories to get into. Nothing particularly earth shattering, but we still have some decent stuff to go ahead and cover. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. Okay, so the first story we have today is the Vive trackers. Remember those things, the Vive trackers? What the heck ever happened to the Vive trackers? I remember last year, I believe, I'm pretty sure this was in 2016. It was relatively late in 2016. And on the VR Roundtable podcast, I can remember discussing the Vive trackers with Steve and Gary and, um, the thought was that these Vive trackers were going to be coming out sometime relatively early in the year 2017. People would be able to buy them. I, I might have my dates off here, but this is from memory, what I remember. And it seems like these Vive trackers have just disappeared into the mist and we haven't heard anything about it. But I remember way back in the day, um, you had cloudgate studios the developers of island 359 you know they had trackers and and they were putting a tracker on your hip and they were putting two trackers on your feet and they were doing this full body immersion into island 359 and kicking dinosaurs and all this stuff and there was all this excitement with the vibe trackers then we didn't hear anything at all about the vibe trackers for an incredibly long period of time and there are a handful of people out there that have them. You can get your hands on them on eBay and stuff like that. But it, but you couldn't just go to like the Vive store and just simply buy a Vive tracker. And it was never really officially released, so to speak. Now, my assumption with all of this was that this had to do with the new sensors that are coming out. Basically, um, Valve is changing the sensors that are going to be on future headsets to work with their new base stations. And so the thought was that maybe these Vive trackers were being held back so that they would have the new sensors that are both backwards, backwards compatible with original lighthouses, but also forwards, forwards compatible with new lighthouses. And that was kind of the uh, thought process there is that's why we're not seeing these Vive trackers. But now Vive trackers are now available to order. Well, in a way they are. Okay, so you can order this Vive accessory. This is on Amazon.com. They have an Amazon exclusive. This is for the, uh, it's, a, it's $150. You get a Vive tracker module and you get a Hyperkin gun that is made to look like the Nintendo Zapper from the 1980s. And you also get a code to Duck Season. Now, this is going to be released on December 12th. So you can pre-order this now on Amazon. It is an Amazon exclusive. And so basically, the trackers themselves, we heard, those are about 100 bucks, And the Duck Season game is 20 bucks. And then, so you're basically paying another 30 bucks for this plastic Hyperkin gun, which has a spot on it where you can screw the tracker on with just one simple screw. You lock it on. And then apparently Duck Season the game is probably going to have some extra code that will be added to it, or maybe it already has been added to it, where you can go into the options and turn on the fact that you have this actual device so you have this tracked gun that that is also within the experience and um you know it's kind of interesting i mean obviously the price for these trackers are going to be a hundred bucks so and, and you get duck season that's 20 bucks if you don't have it already duck season's a pretty decent game um and the the plastic gun i don't know you know i don't know about that but but you know it's a package deal and it's 150 bucks and this is coming on December 12th, and it's a good thing that this has started and that this is now in motion. So Vive trackers are going to start leaking out there. Another set that Amazon has is the Racket Sports set with Vive Tracker. Now, this has not gone live yet, but there is a page on Amazon that shows it, but it doesn't have a price and it doesn't have a lot of the details. But this one is going to include a code 
for virtual sports, which virtual sports includes both ping pong and tennis. Gary of VR Roundtable fame, Gary is, well, he was a really big fan of 11 Table Tennis VR, like really big fan of 11 Table Tennis VR. He got virtual sports and he actually, well, the last last I heard, he actually likes virtual sports more than he likes 11 Table Tennis VR, but he thinks they're both great games. And virtual sports, of course, this game also has like a regular tennis uh, game that is included as well. So this racket sports set, basically it's going to include the Vive Tracker. It's going to include a key to virtual sports, which I believe is 20 bucks as well. And then it's going to include two plastic racket type things, basically, which it's really a handle. It's a it's a tennis racket handle. And then one of them is kind of like a ping pong racquetball style handle. It's a much shorter one. And then the tennis one is a longer one. And you put the tracker in the center of it. So it adds some weight to that to that um, area. So it kind of feels like you have a, a racket in your hand. And so we don't have a date for this. This is not available for pre-order. Um, obviously, we would expect that this would be $150 in the same way. Now, one of the biggest problems, though, with both of these accessories coming out is that Upload VR had a story on this. And according to their information, the, the Vive trackers are not forwards compatible with the new lighthouses. So you better make sure if you're going to buy one of these accessories, you need to know that you're going to be using your regular lighthouses for a long time because these are not forward compatible. So the thing that I thought we were waiting on with Vive trackers was they would get the new sensor, which is forwards and backwards compatible. And that would make sense why this has been delayed so long, but these initial uh, releases are not going to have that. So these are compatible with your existing lighthouse systems. So understand that because if next year, for example, if there is a LG headset, if there are some other Steam VR headsets that come out that have all the new sensors, they come with the new lighthouses, these, these devices will not work with that as far as we can tell. Um, now, it, probably by that time, they will have new Vive trackers, but it's just something to be aware of and something to be uh, aware of, basically. So that handles the Vive accessories. That's kind of the big story of the day, just the fact that these things are back in existence and you can actually get your hands on one of these. Well, on December 12th, you can. Of course, I know what I'm going to be doing on December 12th, and I'm not going to be playing Duck Season. I'm going to be playing something else. So... Um, but it is cool that these things are out there. Um, well, they're going to be out there very soon. I honestly would probably pick up the racket sports set more than I would, um, the, the, uh, the gun one, you know, so I, I would probably pick up the racket sports set because they, they showed pictures of like hollow ball and stuff. So like if hollow ball can use it. If there's a lot of racket games, Racket NX, if Racket NX can use it, you know, if a lot of those games could use it, that would be pretty cool. But um, the the gun one, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing you could probably use the gun in a lot of other stuff, but it's, it's this, you know, it's a retro Nintendo Zapper type gun. So I don't know what kind of feedback it has built into it and, and that sort of thing. I, I think there would be a better general purpose gun for all kinds of various gun games. I think that would make a little more sense. Okay, so the next story we have is Skyrim VR. Now, I know that you guys are going to probably be sick of Skyrim VR because we're going to hear a lot about Skyrim VR in pretty much any VR related discussions over the next probably 10 days really because this is just the way it's going to be. The same thing is going to happen with Doom. The same thing is going to happen with Fallout 4 VR. 
everybody's going to be talking about it and the market's going to be incredibly oversaturated with comments and takes and theories about all this stuff and then it eventually will blow away and people will start to move on to new things and so if you don't want to hear about this skyrim stuff i feel bad for you because you're probably going to hear a lot about it over the next 10 days or so so the news i have is that there are some of the very first Skyrim VR reviews are starting to come out. For example, Upload VR has given the game an 8 out of 10, and VR Focus has given the game a 5 out of 5. Now, those are the only two reviews that I have seen so far, but basically it falls in line with kind of what I thought was going to happen here. I, I believe, I mean, I don't have Skyrim VR yet, right? So I'm going to get it tomorrow, hopefully early tomorrow, uh, but you know, really don't know. But I, I won't be able to report on Skyrim VR on our daily vlog until next Monday's episode. So unfortunately, that's just going to be the way it goes with that. But I, I fully expect that Skyrim VR will be a very good game. And, and I'm sure that it's going to have certain problems in certain areas, but I think most of the problems will be very understandable in nature from the standpoint that it's the limitations. It's the limitations of the controllers that the PlayStation VR has. It's the limitations of the power of what the PlayStation VR has in terms of the fact that the game has to run on a regular vanilla PlayStation 4, not just a PlayStation 4 Pro. So I think most of the issues that the game is gonna have are not really related to like Bethesda not doing a good job. So I, I think it's gonna be pretty understandable and I think most people are gonna be pretty pleased with the overall experience and I'm looking forward to it. I can't really wait till tomorrow. I, I wanna get into that world. The cool thing about it is when Skyrim first came out, I played it for, um, probably like 12 hours or so and then I got sidetracked and I never got back to it um, and so that's kind of cool for me because as somebody you know that kind of missed out on Skyrim to a bit to a degree you know I kind of played that initial beginning area and got into it a little bit and then kind of faded away on it so it's almost going to be like a completely new experience for me almost starting over from scratch and, and being immersed in a VR world. Really, probably one of the biggest problems with this game is gonna be the fact that VR doesn't lend itself to the type of play sessions that you normally would have with a game like Skyrim or Fallout. And that's gonna be one of the most interesting things actually to find out. Like, will my gaming habits in VR, will they change with Skyrim VR? Or am I still going to be kind of this 45-minute guy? Typically, when I play VR games, I play it for about 35, 45 minutes or so, and then usually I take a break after that. Now, if I get a big, brand new game that is like really hyped and there's a ton of excitement, like when I got Arctica 1, I played that probably for like an hour and 15, an hour and a half maybe before I stopped. And I'll probably do that with Skyrim VR tomorrow when I get the game as well. But I'm talking more of my normal gameplay sessions. Like a couple days later, um, I don't expect that I will have the headset on for multiple hours. But we had some people, you know, we had that story. I don't know if it was yesterday or I think it was the day before about how many how long people spend in VR. And I think there were a couple of people in the comments that said that they wear their headset for four and five hours at a time, which is just absolutely incredible. But um, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen for me. But yeah, the, the first reviews have started to leak out. It does look good. So that bodes well for Skyrim VR. Okay, next story we have is Spark. Spark is available on Steam right now for the price of $19.99. Now, I went and checked on PlayStation, uh, on the PlayStation Store to see if the PlayStation Store price dropped from $29.99 to this $19.99 price to have parity between the PlayStation version and the Steam version. And no, there's no price drop. The PSVR price is still $29.99. So Steam, you can get this for a $10 discount. 
at 20 bucks. Um, I did check the Oculus Store. It was not on the Oculus Store yet, although that was like about an hour ago, so it might be on there now. Typically, what will happen is the game will show up on Steam uh, a few hours before it shows up on the Oculus Store. It's usually a little bit later to arrive on the Oculus Store, but 20 bucks, I mean, I'm assuming it's 20 bucks on Oculus as well. Spark for 20 bucks on PC VR is a great deal. And it's a great deal because, first of all, like I have the PlayStation VR version and I really like the game. The game is really good. It has a great feel. It, it has a real clean design to it. It was it's very smartly designed and 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 just being able to actually just watch other people play is is very enjoyable as well that they, they did some really cool things with spark in terms it's almost like you're looking at an aquarium tank and you see the two people playing and you're like this big giant godzilla that is like hovering over this little aquarium and you're watching the two people play and it's pretty cool i mean it's like holograms and and, and those kinds of things i always talk about how sometimes when you're wearing a vr headset and you're looking at stuff it almost appears like there's holograms right there and spark does a very good job of that and then the actual game itself of just like throwing the ball and hitting the ball and trying to score goals it just feels good the ball has a great flow and 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 it just whizzes the sound is really cool as the ball is like you know flying around um i actually had more fun to be completely honest in the uh, training mode like in the training mode you can go through these different training scenarios and there's leaderboards and so you can keep trying to get better and better just going through the training mode as like single player mode basically and I had a lot of fun with that now on PlayStation VR I don't have a PlayStation Plus account which I probably should go just go ahead and sign up for one at this point because you know there's going to be more and more PlayStation VR games that are going to start to have multiplayer. I'm not really a multiplayer guy and so haven't really been that into getting like a PlayStation Plus account, but hopefully as time goes on, Sony will start giving away free games, free PlayStation VR games, like they do with regular normal games. Now, they've been doing this a little bit here and there. Like, I think players could get bound. There was another, uh, um, Riggs was a game that you could get for a little while. But it's not officially part of PlayStation Plus. It's just kind of like they've been throwing in some games here and there. And then, of course, you know, you if you have PlayStation Plus, then you can do the multiplayer. Well, the good thing about Spark on PC, you don't have to pay an extra fee to play multiplayer. So you can get this game for 20 bucks. You save 10 bucks off what PlayStation VR players have to play, and you don't have to pay any extra to uh, to do the multiplayer. So I mean, it's a win-win from both of those standpoints, and honestly, if I was going to buy Spark, I would buy it on the like. I would probably play it on my Oculus Rift simply because of the touch controllers. It's nothing against the Vive, the Vive Wands. It's just this game, this game of Spark, it's almost like you feel like you would have touch controllers on your hand in the actual real game. So I just think it, it, it just the way the touch controllers kind of mold into your hands, I think it would lend itself better to Spark. I'm sure it would still be great with the Vive Wands and the tracking, obviously, the tracking on the Vive and the tracking on the Oculus Rift are is far superior to PlayStation VR. So the experience should be even enhanced from that as well. And the game of Spark, I've mentioned Portal when talking about Spark. And the reason I mentioned Portal is just this clean aesthetic of the game. It's just very clean. It's very crisp. It's very clinical in, um, in a way, and, and just the way the graphics are, it just reminds me a little bit of Portal. Now, there's no gameplay that's like Portal or anything like that, but I know there's something about the look of Spark that does remind me of Portal. So that is available today, should be coming to the Oculus Store anytime, and if you got a spare 20 bones, you might want to grab it. I think it's actually damn good, uh, a damn good release. Um, Unfortunately, it's kind of a Debbie Downer story with the CCP games angle as fact from the standpoint that this is basically the last VR CCP game we're going to get for probably quite some time, which is quite unfortunate. But 
you know that's the way it goes okay so today is november 16th and that is payday 2 vr right this is the open beta okay well a guy that was in australia um, he threw up a thread on Reddit saying, what is the deal? Where's Payday 2 VR? Because he's saying, look, I'm in Australia. It's already nighttime. This day is pretty much done. And I don't see anything with Payday 2 VR. What's going on here? Well, somebody popped into the thread and said that it they expect Payday 2 VR to hit Steam, the update that will add it to hit Steam around 10 p.m. Pacific time. So um, I, I started this recording before that. So when I'm done with this, I'm definitely going to head over to Steam and see if they got that update. Payday 2 VR is going to be super interesting for me because I have I, I don't think I've ever played Payday 2. I think I played a little bit of Payday 1, but only briefly and never played payday 2 so it's almost going to be like a completely new experience for me so that will be very interesting to see how that turns out um, but that should be available a little bit later today by the time you hear this it should be available and the first reports of payday 2 vr and how good it is or or how good it might not be that should start to leak out as we get later into the day okay um Another little story we have is Coco, which which is Pixar's VR debut. This hit the Oculus Store yesterday, and I was able to try this out. And it is a really cool free experience. It is completely free. You don't have to pay anything. Um, this is it's a it's a movie tie-in experience, and so that's what they're trying to do here is they're trying to kind of give some attention to the movie Coco, but also trying to do some interesting VR things and kind of some experimentation with VR as far as Pixar is concerned. Now, most people will see this headline and they'll be like, oh my God, Pixar? Oh my God, I got to check this out. Pixar in VR? Oh my God, what are they going to do in VR? It's going to be incredible. It's going to blow everything away. No, when you get into this experience, you're not going to notice immediately, oh my God, this is Pixar. You can tell right away this is Pixar. You're not going to get that kind of feeling from this experience. It's a very cool experience. There's a lot of stuff to do. Um, you can kind of teleport around this world of, uh, well, the movie is uh, Dia de... Dia de los Muertos, which, well, the movie's called Coco, but it's based on Dia de los Muertos, which is Day of the Dead. And um, so you're in, I don't really know what the, the storyline is for the movie, but you're in this, uh, you're in the world of the dead, basically. And it, it just is incredibly colorful and, and vibrant. And when you get out into this main square, where it's kind of like the center of the city and it's just so colorful and beautiful it looks like you're in spain or something and you're just looking around at everything and it really does look beautiful you can teleport there's a lot of places though you can't go you can't just go anywhere there's no free locomotion you have to teleport it's a little bit clunky with uh the controls i found when you're going through this experience but there's different areas you can go to and you can sample some different things. I thought the best part of this whole experience is you get to this one point where you see this elevator, okay? And you can teleport over to the elevator. You teleport inside the elevator and you close the elevator door. And so it starts, it raises you up to this higher platform in this city square that is incredibly colorful and vibrant and really beautiful and the sound is really good and everything so anyway you get up to this second floor and you get you come out of the elevator and you're kind of on this ledge and there's these there there's um some paper airplanes that are sitting on the ledge and you can pick up the paper airplane and you can throw the paper airplane right and you see the paper airplane sailing and you know it was interesting i can i can speak to this because i threw the paper airplane i was watching it sail i was standing really close to this uh to this rail right and i was looking at it and i was watching the the paper airplane just kind of like fly and, and and drift down and then land on the ground and it landed on the ground almost like you know like a feather kind of land it it landed pretty realistically 
And for a split second there, I was like, oh, shit. I, I felt like I was going to fall off of there. And I got like a real sense of uh, m my fear of heights, you know, which I do have a fear of heights. Like you won't see me standing on the edge of like some cliff that has a thousand foot drop. I'm not going to be the guy that gets right up on the cliff. I might walk over there and kind of take a look and be like, OK, I'm good. And, and I'll back away. And when I threw that paper airplane, it was like something in my brain had triggered with how that paper airplane landed that made it seem like, whoa, this seems more real than we thought it was. And then it triggered like a burst of fear for a second there, which was kind of cool. I haven't felt that in quite some time. So um, that was interesting. But then a little bit after that little section there, after the paper airplane section, you go over to this other area where it's kind of like a subway train or like a little train that you get in or a tram that you get inside of. And that's the best part of this whole Coco experience. This actually is a pretty long experience. It lasts for a while. There's a lot of depth to it. But you get inside this little train and it starts moving along. And it does feel like you're on a Disney ride or something because you're moving along and, and you see the other dead people, you know, and, and they're talking and you hear voices and music and, and you're kind of moving along and you're seeing stuff as you move along. That part is really cool. I really liked the tram ride. And then the tram ride eventually takes you over to where this main stage is, where these people are performing and there's a crowd watching. And then so they expect you to start performing and, and the guy like makes out a yell or a scream and he's like how about you you do it and then you you try to say something and he's like come on you could do better than that you know and, and then you get these little maracas and you start shaking them around and and it's just a cool it's a cool scenario to try out it's i i put this up there with blade runner memory lab 2049 in terms of like when it comes to these free experiences a lot of them are kind of crappy but these both of these two experiences memory lab 2049 and this coco experience definitely both worth checking out there's a lot of historical stuff too that's in this coco thing you can go into this one room where it's showing artwork and you hit these buttons and it's almost like a museum and it's telling you about the different artists that worked on these different Dia de los Muertos type designs and, and you know how all that artwork started in Mexico and and that kind of thing. And so it's kind of a history lesson in, in certain parts of it. And so there's a lot to explore here. There's a lot you can take your head off at one point and you can like do little colorations on your head and then put your head back on. And so it, it's it's a cool experience to try out. Nothing groundbreaking. Um, you know, I mean, like I remember when I first tried Henry for the oculus and when i first tried lost the henry honestly is more pixar to me than this is but being in that center square and just seeing the beautiful colors and everything everywhere and 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 when you're on that tram and you see the beautiful world as you're on the tram that looked really cool and that is definitely a, an experience worth having and so Everybody out there should try Coco. I imagine it would work perfectly fine through Revive. So if you're a Vive owner, you should probably try it. And I'm sure it would work great. So that is Coco, which debuted yesterday on the Oculus Store. Okay, so we've hit 28 minutes. So that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for episode 34 for Thursday, November 16th. And I will see you guys tomorrow on Skyrim Friday. See you guys tomorrow. Take it easy.